Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and the wait for Godot has gotten one step shorter. Yes, Godot 4.5 Beta 1 was released earlier this week. We're going to jump in and take a look at what's new in that release, but first, we're going to do a previously on Game From Scratch, and we're going to look at what was in each one of the dev releases leading up to this, because these are all part of the beta. These are the features we can expect to see in Godot 4.5. I'm going to buzz through these, but I'll give you the top level. So in Dev 1, which was first released back in March, we got the ability to mute game window, the game preview window, as well as to multiple select objects in them and view them in the inspector. We also got the new collision system. I will highlight that again today in this video because it is a very cool feature and the ability to drag and drop resource UIDs. And then into the second release in April, we got a dedicated 2D navigation server, which was split out from the 3D server. That was previously the only option. Reorganized shader editor UI. You can now change languages and no longer require a restart. Uh, fragment density support. This is like for things like foveated rendering where you focus your, on the middle where you, people can see as opposed to the edges of the screen. Wayland support replacing X11 well, not replacing, augmenting X11 on Linux, and several other features. And then in April, the end of April, Dev3 came. Here we got screen reader support via access kit, a new script backtracing support, inspector section toggling, which I love and will show you again today, and then a number of fixes. Then Dev4 showed up in May. Here we got uh, an update on C Sharp support for web platforms, uh, embedded Windows support. Uh, so the game window uh, was now embeddable on Mac OS. Uh, 3D physics interpolation was moved into the scene tree. Variants can now be exported, stackable outlines and shadows on labels, which I will showcase today. And specular occlusion was added for ambient lights. You can turn that on or off globally. And then we had the Dev 5 release at the beginning of June, which gave us uh, Vision OS support. So those six people are very happy. Uh, we've got the abstract class was added to GD script. We got the ability to um, bake shaders in advance uh, for speeding up shader compilation for uh, either Apple devices or Direct 3D 12 benefit heavily from this. Basically, you're offloading. So instead of at game time, you're doing this at build time. Uh, also makes your build quite a bit bigger, though. And then we had uh, web SIMD support was added in. This actually made things a lot faster as a result. Uh, inline color picker, which for some reason did not get its own bullet, was added. Uh, inside of code, uh, SMAA was added as another anti-aliasing option, and they added support for bent normal maps. And that leads us to today. Now, I'm going to go hands-on at this point in time. So you can go ahead. You can download this right now. This is, as you might be able to guess, the 4.5 beta one. We should not get any new features after this particular release. By the way, what you see in action, this is one of the environments is still going on. The, uh, I think it's Star Nova or Space Nova um, bundle over on Gumroad. The link is down below. This is one of the five environments that are specifically for the Godot game engine. I've used it for, I think, all the demonstrations for this so far. The beta, the sale is still going on. Make sure you use the code SN40 at checkout to save as much money as possible. All right, so we have this awesome new feature here uh, for meshes. It's called stenciling. Uh, been asked for forever. So let's see. We've got our mesh over here. We have our surface override set up for it. We scroll on down and look at the bottom of our surface override, and you're now noticing there is a new category here called stenciling. Stencil, and you have a couple of options with stencil. You can have nothing, which is going to be the default. So it's currently uh, nothing. So we could switch it to outline. And this is like super handy. because so what this is going to do, so you see here, we added a black outline around our object. So we can go ahead, let's make that red. It'll show up much better. Uh, and then we've also got the control of the thickness and so on. Now you see it's doing it to all the barrels in the scene, but this new stencil ability is very, very cool. So that is the outline. There's also an x-ray option, and then there's a custom option as well. Uh, so you have stenciling options there, and along with that, they've also did some shader updates, which allow you to do some pretty cool stuff. So for example, here from their uh, demonstration, let's just drop this beetle into the scene. Oh, wrong one. Beetle into the scene, like so, right? So see it? See it? Yeah, all right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move it a little bit like this, and now I'm going to obstruct it. Look at that. So you've got um, X-ray shader support being added via this as well. So this is being done uh, via a shader that is attached to this with some new options. So you see as it's, as it's obscured, Otherwise, it is showing up extra. This is stuff you use in your game all the time. So this new stencil support is a very cool new feature. So you can see it's implemented via this shader. And more specifically, you're going to notice they added this new stencil mode uh, that was added into shader technology. So this is the shader that's actually supporting that functionality. So that is a new release. I actually very much love this. I, again, it's something that people use all the time to say like, um, unit selection and picking and so on, uh, something that you end up having to roll your own. Now it's super simple. You can do it with any shader uh, or standard shader 3D object. It's literally just a property. Or as you can see, inside of a shader, you do now have the stencil mode there for doing stuff like this.
which is cool. All right, so next up we have this change here, which I also very much love. So what you're gonna see here is they've updated it. I'm gonna switch this over to the top and they've changed it so, so I'm gonna show all the assets from that mod, from that pack right here. So these are now being rendered at a very consistent angle and size. So you're gonna get a very, um, when you look at your preview, it's going to be much nicer looking. It's the same thing as they updated the way the 2D works as well, but it's more profound on 3D objects. So these, the way they generate these thumbnails now, uh, they, they go from an angle and inclusion level that they should all look consistent and they should fully frame the object you are looking at. So very useful for browsing through the objects that you want in your scene. So uh, like you see, again, if you're using this pack, for example, you can see all the various different objects that are available from this one. Again, this bundle is down below, but do use the code SN40. I don't want you wasting money. All right, so that one is a very cool new feature, but probably my favorite new feature, to be honest, is this right here. Here. Okay, it's not showcasing well. Let's go back to uh, the shader that we were looking at a second ago. So, uh, one sec. All right, here we go. So this is going to be true on any object. Shader is a good point because you got all kinds of things that you're not necessarily using. Look at this. So we added the new bent normal maps, for example, but I'm not using them. So you see now it collapses it down and gives you this on option and then nothing there. Whereas this one, the ambient occlusion, it is on. So you see it's expanded. So say I want to add a height map to this or say a new bent normal map. So I come in here, I say, turn it on and then it expands out. If I don't, I turn it off. Same thing for any one of these things. If it's got changes, uh, it will it will branch out like what you see here, all the options that are available. But if it doesn't, so if there's nothing set for the property, it uh, classes it down. I love this. It's a little thing, but it's a huge quality of life feature. It makes it so much easier to navigate and see what has been and hasn't been turned on. I love that one. Now, another one, I can't really showcase it to you that well here, but we got this. View, preview translations. Now, I can't showcase it well because I don't have any translations, but if you've got your UI, say, set up to run in you know, Arabic or uh, Chinese or, you know, Latin character sets, whatever. You can switch between them right here and it'll switch them up on the fly in the editor. Definitely a nice new feature that was added in the 4.5 beta specifically. So definitely an improvement there. Now we got a couple other ones to showcase that already happened. As I mentioned, I would recover them. Let's go down here, take a look at resources. And what I want to show you is this level right here. So what I've set up here is a very super ultra simple tile map. And this is a huge new detail that they've added here. What you're going to notice here is these things all have, so if we look here, see that? That line right there, that is a polygon being cut to be the minimum number of polygons as possible. So now when you actually draw your tile, so this tile is set up already. So I've set up a collision polygon around it for, the way it used to work is when you created a tile map, each one of these tiles would have its own polygon. So a polygon here, a polygon here, a polygon here, and so on. So now when I go ahead and draw on the scene, so there's a single one, that is a rectangle there. That is a rectangle, right? So got two different rectangles, but here now it's continuous. It's got one solid rectangle that would shape them all together. Same thing here. As I add more, you notice the polygons are being cut in and then ditto if I erase out, it cuts in around it. So what this is doing is creating one simple single collision for that object throughout the scene, however it makes sense. So this is really going to speed up your tile maps, like a lot. It turns, um, so you say you had a thousand tiles, that would be a thousand different polygons. It turns it instead to like a handful of polygons for collision tests. This one is a big deal and I absolutely love it. Now, another one that they added, again, this is a small little thing, but I really like it. So we got the ability, let's add a label into our world like this guy right here. Let's just move that over here and zoom in on it. Okay, get it off the line. All right, so all your base are belong to Mike. All right, so there is just some text in the world. Nothing too special going on there. But we do have this new feature. This is something you actually do quite often, so it's a nice little feature. So you go into label settings and you now have stacked effects. Go to stacked effects and you can do an outline. So I can add one in here. So let's say I want to do a black outline around this. I could do that and then say, okay, however many pixels I want it to be, and then ditto for shadows. So if I want to do, I can add a shadow and then we basically pick the uh, outline size like so. And then I can offset it in a given direction or otherwise. Right, so there you go. So you can upset it that way or up and down, down and up. So you've got the ability to offset things like that. And again, they're stacked. So you could do multiple. So I could do here. I could go ahead and make this one red like so and make it something other than zero pixels. 
So, oh, did I turn it blue? I did. All right, let's make that back to red. All right, here we go. So there you can see, and you got control over the uh, draw order of them right here. Super handy. It's one of those things you're going to do quite often with text. So label now has these two new stacked, um, stacked outlines and stacked shadows functionality there. Uh, I, again, I quite like that. And again, I also love the fact that things toggle on and off. They only show if they're on. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Nice little feature. So that's it for the uh, hands-on portion of this. We got some nice, nice new things added on top of what already was done through Dev 1 through 5. So it's shaping up that Gajo 4.5 is going to have some pretty nice stuff in here. Now, we got a bunch of other announcements here as well. I'm not going to go through here line by line. Some things definitely broke. Uh, we got new uh, bone options here, which uh, give you some new options. Uh, so we, you'll be able to bind a bone to another bone, opening for more natural uh, movements and poses. So there is the uh, disabled and enabled effect. Uh, so new bend options and so on. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, Fiora video files can now be seeked through. C Sharp, there's a lot of improvements going on here. The biggest one here is AOT uh, or ahead of time compilation is available on Android. A bunch of other things they're working on as well, including uh, speed up here. Uh, so performance improvements in interop because of this. So you're going to see up to a 60 times decrease in resources for getters and setters as an example. Uh, but a lot of this isn't ready for dot 4.5. So it's one of those things. C sharp is still being worked on, but it's not here yet. Uh, a number of changes also. So I mentioned earlier on the uh, callback of scripts, the script tracing can be shown. So you can see if you have, um, you have, uh, funk two, so funk one calling funk two and then funk two calling a trace back and then there you can see the end result of it it's one of those useful things it's basically like a, a, a call stack but you can do it at script time so you don't have to set a breakpoint or in to see how things are going it makes it easier to print things out and debug how your code is going some improvements to the documentation is always welcome again we have the updates to the way that thumbnails are rendered uh, both 2d and 3d which is quite nice this one is they now have the ability to expose variants and then you can come in and then when you set the value, you toggle the type of the variant in the editor. I don't know if variants exposed exported to tools is a good idea or not, uh, but you can now do it. So, um, and then GDScript. GDScript actually got a couple of really cool new features. Um, some of these were from previous dev releases for sure. And one of them is coming up. That's a huge new thing that I think they just added in the beta. So the one thing that we've got now is the addition of the abstract keyword. This was used internally. It has now been exposed to everybody. An abstract class is a a class that you can um, not instantiate. So basically you can declare the class as abstract. It means if someone tries to create it, you will get an error. As you see right here, cannot construct abstract class item. Now, why the hell would you want to make a class that you can't use? It is a way of defining an interface more or less. So abstract classes are now being added. Now the big one that was just added is this one. He added variadic arguments. Now variadic arguments is basically a way of saying, let's toss an array on the end of our argument stack. And then you just keep adding arguments till the cows come home, which is kind of useful for some cool things. So you can see, for example, a function here, it takes um, an integer of A of B and then an args array like so. Um, basically, well, you can just keep adding as many additional parameters as you want there. So it allows you to create these functions that can take um, many, many, many uh, parameters in, in this variable arg set. A lot of programming languages do this and now GDScript can do it as well. Uh, then we have some improvements to the GUI. Again, a lot of this was around the accessibility, like the access kit stuff. So you can now use screen readers and so on. Uh, we added the foldable content, uh, foldable container class in there. Uh, and then you've got this new, um, so ability to manipulate a group of control simultaneously is much easier thanks to this uh, pull request with a focus on recursive control across child controls. Implements a new property for recursively disabling focus mode and mouse filter on child controls. Uh, this was an internal thing for rendering down SVGs. I'm not sure how many use of this is going to be for many people. This one is actually kind of neat. In the advanced import, it was added to Godot 4. There were some issues around uh, working with multiple assets using a single material. So now the uh, advanced import settings dialog corrected oversight by reintroducing option in the import dialog to configure whether to extract materials in a way that supports multi-asset configuration. So you can see here, they select three different objects. They extract the material out as this one material and then it updates on all of the objects. So using the extract tool there and then boom, changes it out. 
and boom, it updates them all. So if you're working with multiple objects with uh, shared materials, could be useful for in there. Uh, this one hasn't happened yet, but a move to SDL3 for controller. Uh, some internationalization features there. Again, you can now change the editor, uh, change the language in the editor without having to restart the editor, which is cool. And then here you can see the translations actually in effect. So you've got different languages here. As you switch between the preview trans, um, you go up to, again, view, preview translation, and then you can switch your translation and it'll automatically update the language. So if you're working with internationalization, this one is gonna be a huge time saver for you. Very cool there. Uh, again, the navigation server, the 2D was broken out from 3D, so they are now separate things. Uh, physics, we now have uh, interpolation options there for smoothing it out. Uh, and then since the integration of Jolt Physics, new 3D physics engine, I've created nearly 20 new fixes and improvements there as well. Android now has this cool thing called a touch actions panel. You can see it over here. This was made mostly for the Android version of the Godot engine, which by the way, you can run Godot on um, Android, which is very cool. So now we have this new kind of touch bar that does a lot of the commonality things that you could need, uh, which is also floating uh, option as well. So it gives you the ability to do functionality that you can't easily do otherwise. So that's the new touch actions panel. You can use that in your own Android game if you wish as well. Again, Linux has Wayland support there as a replacement for X11. X11 is still around right now, but they're moving towards full parity between the two, or I think they might have hit full parity. On the Mac OS side of things, that new game window, this little button right over here, now embeds on Mac OS as well, uh, which is nice. Vision OS is now supported. So again, those six people are happy. And then this one's funny, it's SIMD support. They enabled this as a compiler flag, which is just like a setting, and it caused a massive speed up. So that's cool to see. Uh, Windows 7 and 8.1 are being dropped with uh, 4.5 and beyond. They're kind of getting pretty, I know some people are like diehard Windows 7 people, but you're kind of getting to the point where you're you're getting a little bit behind. Um, and then again, stencils, I love this. Great new feature uh, that was added in. So again, the new uh, options that are used for it. Here, they can actually create this fire effect using just a standard material, no shader was required there. A um, couple new shader features here. Um, specular occlusions, this is turned on globally, by the way. So you either have it on or off, it is a single setting. You see it mostly on the, see the way the lighting renders down over here versus over here. So that's the biggest area I noticed the difference personally, but, and then a little bit on the floor lighting there as well. Pretty subtle. Again, here versus here. You're gonna lose a lot of it probably even in the video encoding. It's very subtle, but uh, this one has, uh, actually they're both labeled as only AO. Uh, so, and then we have the, the new anti-aliasing. I, I said this before, I don't see a huge difference personally. And the people in the to comments told me that I'm on crack and it's a major difference. So let me know if, if you're seeing it uh, there. And then here, this one shows it a little bit more. But it, it's, it's subtle to me. Uh, and then we've got bent normal maps. Bent normal maps, you actually, they're basically normal maps with more information stored in them. Um, they're part of the creation process. So if your assets support bent normals, if you created your normal maps as bent normals, they will now be supported in Godot when you import those assets in. So you see a bit of results. So this one definitely shows up. So look over here, over there. So it bakes some additional lighting information into your normals. And then again, we do now have the shader baker. It is part of your export process. So when you click on the shader baker on export, click, uh, and then this causes a massive speed up on the shader compilation, but it makes your project bigger. So it's a trade off for sure, but you can see the, the TPS demo gets like, uh, like uh, there, that one speed versus that one speed in terms of loading. It's, it's a massive difference there. Uh, and then, yeah, we've got a number of other changes as well. If you want to go ahead and download it, it is available for download right now. That, ladies and gentlemen, is Godot 4.5 Beta 1. So Beta 2, Beta 3, Beta 4, Beta 5, all those things, if they exist, they shouldn't really add any new features. So this is probably my last Godot 4.5 video until Godot 4.5 itself ships, which hopefully should be within a month or two. So let me know what you think of this release. Are you excited by the new features? Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.